Have you ever wondered if we really need one of these expensive red light therapy panels? Why can't we just go outside and get some sun? Well, you know what? I thought that as well. So what I've done is I've taken my spectrometer in the middle of summer and I've gone out in the middle of the day to try and determine how much therapeutic red light therapy there is coming from our sun. Now I'm also going to do one in winter time to compare and see if there is a difference from the seasons. But since it's summertime in the Southern Hemisphere, of course we start with summer. Okay, so first what I did is a reading at 10 a.m. That, as you can see, there is a little bit of cloud cover here, so it wasn't great. But when you look at the spectrometer here, uh, it still gives a pretty good overview of how much light is being emitted. Now, the top number, the EE figure in the 40s, this is how much irradiance the device is reading. What's important to note here is it's across the full spectrum of light that it's testing, which is your visible range uh, right up to the 10, 50 nanometer near infrared light. Yeah, I mean, there is uh, uh, definitely, you are definitely getting red light. You are definitely getting near infrared light, but you're also getting a lot of the blue, yellow, amber, uh, orange. The dominant wavelength is in that blue light spectrum. So your 480s to 490s. Now, I just wanted to show you this because I will be doing a full breakdown of how much power is coming out at each wavelength soon. But I want to show you the 10 a.m. Now I'm going to look at the midday. Remember, this was the longest day of the summer season here in New Zealand. So let's look at midday now. Okay, so unfortunately, as you see, there is still a lot of cloud cover, which was quite frustrating. Uh, what's interesting here is there's a lot more blue light and a lot less green and, and yellow and orange uh, relative to the previous um, uh, spectrometer data. Still though, of course, you're getting the reds and the near infrareds. But I really wanted to get a good clear reading on a clear summer's day here in New Zealand. So I decided to wait. And of course that day was a write-off and then so it was the next day and the next day and then it was Christmas and then it rained and yeah, we didn't have the best mid-December. So it wasn't until mid-Jan where I was at home, had all my gear and we finally got a clear summer's day. And it was January the 12th. Now, as you can see here, I finally got a clear blue sky, though it was only in chunks. So uh, I ran out and took this reading. So let's look at the data for that day. Okay, so here is the spectrometer data for midday reading on a clear summer's day. Now, first up, the graph, the chart, the spectrogram, it looks pretty similar to that 10 a.m. reading. Uh, the peak in the blue, about the 4, it's, it's 490 here, and then tapers off, and then it actually picks up again when you get into the near infrared wavelengths. But the main thing I want to refer to here is this EE figure, which is your power irradiance figure. It's 113 milliwatts over centimeter squared. So, so that is a lot of energy. I mean, it's, it's heaps, and it's a lot more than the cloudy day, right? Uh, what was that figure, about 50 or something? So we're getting double the amount of energy just when you get in a clear day uh, compared to that slightly cloudy. I mean, it was still a hot summer day with that first reading, um, but you're not in the peak blue sky sun. Now, the key question is though, how does this compare to a red light therapy panel? Because at the moment, this is showing power radiance for 380 right up to 1050. So to answer this, I need to look at the data set. So let's do this now. Okay, so what I've got is a spreadsheet with all the data points for every single wavelength from the 300 through to 1050. So let's pull this up now. Okay, so firstly, we're going to go down here and we can see the snapshot for this particular reading. There was a radiance figure of 118, so really, really high uh, radiance. Dominant nanometer wavelength was 490, so we're in the blues there. There's a lot of interesting data points through here. You can geek out on them if you want to. Let me see the range here, 380 through to 1050. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You can see the milliwatt over meter squared divided by nanometer squared figure for every single wavelength. Okay, so we want to come down to the red. So you can see these figures here are just below 2000, uh, meaning there's less energy in the red light compared to the blue that we saw earlier on. A little bit lower, 660 here. As you go down, it drops down some more. Uh, let's go to 850 nanometers. So you're a little bit less again. And then as we go out into the near infrared, the larger wavelengths, it actually picks up a little bit. So 900s, it's quite low. Uh, as we get closer to the 1050, it actually 
goes quite high and, th and that's what we saw with that graph. All of this is kind of meaningless without context. So what I've done here is I've gone and tested a block blue light mega 4.0. It was hanging up beside me from an earlier experiment. So I fired that up, took a snapshot reading at six inches. Now remember this particular panel of block blue light mega has five wavelengths and it is the second most powerful panel on the market. So it doesn't necessarily give a true representation of most panels out there, but it does show what you can get from a red light therapy panel. So I'm going to show that data now. Okay, so you can see the block blue light data through here. So again, 118 for the sun, total radiance, 84 for block blue light. Remember, this is for the full range. So based on this, there's yes, there's more energy from the sun. However, the block blue light is only putting out therapeutic red, narrow red wavelengths. So let's come down. You can see the dominant wavelength here is 626 versus the sun's 490. You can see the red percent ratio here, 95% of the energy is in the red light. 16% was in the sun. So there's a massive difference, right? Let's go down to the key data points. All right, so straight away, spectrum data for each wavelength. In the 300s here, look at all this energy from the sun. Very, very little next to nothing from the block blue light mega. I mean, that could be background light from the overhead lights or the light in the room. So let's come down into the 600s. And you'll notice as I'm scrolling down, the block blue light numbers are getting higher, though that's still very small relative to the sun. Higher, higher. Okay, now we're up in the thousands. So let's look at 630 first. 1,895 was the figure for the sun. Remember, this is milliwatts over meter squared for each nanometer. 7,319 from the block blue light. So that's three or four times the amount of power for 630 nanometer light. Let's go down to 660, another common wavelength, 1800 versus 8500. So three, four times the amount, a huge, huge amount of, uh, huge increase. Remember this is peak midday sun on a clear sky uh, compared to a red light therapy panel, six inches from the panel. All right, so that's, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you just total these figures up here from six, let's say from, we'll go from 620, through to 680, we get a figure of 114,000. Now, if we do the same for the block blue light, we get a figure of 300,000. So more than double the amount of red light. Now let's go to the near infrared spectrum. First, we'll look at 810. So again, similar sort of ratios, 1,400 versus 7,300, a lot more in the red light therapy panel. And then we go down to 850, similar again, 1400 versus 5200. We'll do a total from, we'll say 800 through to 860. The sun has a figure of 85,000. For the block blue light panel, 360,000. So a lot, lot more energy is coming from that red light therapy panel compared to the sun hey if you're enjoying this go down uh hit the like button i really appreciate it, it takes you a couple of seconds also hit the subscribe button you'll get a lot more cool videos like this cool experiments reviews news all that awesome stuff when it comes to red light therapy really do appreciate it uh, and it helps me keep doing cool things like this however and there's a big however you do have to admit that the difference isn't that dramatic remember the block blue light panel the Mega 4.0 was just released December 2023. It's only a couple months old. It is, if you head over to the Light Therapy Insiders, pull up the shopping tool and sort all my panels from a radiance, you'll see it's the second most powerful panel I've ever tested, ever, okay? It's an extremely powerful panel. Most panels are not putting out 80 milliwatts over centimeter squared. Most are down at about 60, right? Even that was is still a lot of power. So it's important to keep that in mind because you have something that is top of the class effectively. That's what we're comparing against here. But the sun isn't that far behind. I mean, yes, it is three or four times lower, but I mean, it's free, right? And it's outside and it's everywhere. Um, and not only that, you're getting all of these other wavelengths. I mean, yeah, you're getting a lot of blue light, but you're going to get 680, 690, 700, 710. Let's pull up the 700s. There isn't that much re research around the 700s. It's been quite effective from a therapeutic point of view, but let's just pull up 700 nanometers here. So the sun is putting out 1,630. The mega, 79. I mean, effectively, it's you're not getting any 700 light, but you are with the sun. 
Okay, let's go. Let's pull up another one. Let's pull up uh, 950. 960. 960. That's being used before. Um, 960. Here we go. 1,000 milliwatts over meter squared versus 25 in the red light therapy panel. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised. The key takeaway here is if you're wanting to get into red light therapy, but you can't afford these panels, but you want the benefits of red light and you live in a climate where you get sun exposure, which is most places, just go outside. Of course, this is for just general wellness, right? Now, if you're looking at, I don't know, wound healing, uh, deep tissue, you know, something with, to do with the brain, for instance, you're, you're targeting your red light lasers into a certain area. You want that light in the sinus cavity for, you know, immune function, or you're wanting, you're wanting to utilize red light therapy for recovery in the gym and stuff like that. Red light therapy is very effective. It's been well documented. I've done videos on looking at the science and talking about case studies. I have seen benefits from using red light therapy and I try and get out in the sun as not as much as possible, but I live an outdoor lifestyle. It wasn't until I brought in red light therapy that I saw a lot of these benefits. When I stopped red light therapy, the benefits disappeared, right? I've done videos on, on all of this stuff. But if you're just someone who's like, hey, uh, you know, trying to live a healthy lifestyle and you're getting caught up in, oh, I need this supplement and this product and I need to go do these blood tests and oh, now I need this red light therapy panel, then hey, the, looking at this data, it shows that that's not necessarily the case. Um, you can get outside, spend 20 minutes outside and you're going to get a heap of red light, therapeutic red light. You're also going to get all the other wavelengths, which we know are beneficial in terms of circadian rhythm alignment. I mean, panels are coming out now with amber light, the mitre red light panel. Uh, there's panels out there with green light for migraines. It's it's interesting, isn't it? Of course, though, if you're someone who can't get outside into the sun, I mean, you're too busy, you live in a climate where there's very little sun, maybe it's too hot, whatever, uh, then yeah, a red light therapy panel is going to be great also it has the convenience factor you can use it any time of the day you can use it when you're training you can use it in the office whatever you can use it when you're traveling with the smaller devices but a key point here that i think is quite important think of red light therapy as a very targeted treatment modality okay so if you take supplements some people will say oh why do you take supplements you don't need supplements just eat a wholesome diet but it's very, very hard in today's world to eat a very wholesome diet. I mean, you have to go out of the way to buy organic and or grow your own food and you know, really put the effort in to eat a wholesome diet. And then you got to make sure that your gut's working properly and you know, it's, it's tricky. Whereas you can go out and take a few supplements and you know they're going to be very beneficial. Magnesium, for instance. A lot of people are deficient in magnesium. Food isn't growing the way it used to be growing. Uh, it's, it's just very hard to get a lot of magnesium in the diet whereas we know that magnesium is very beneficial for the health so a lot of people get good benefits when they supplement with magnesium so why not supplement with magnesium the same can be said about physical performance creatine yes you get a little bit of creatine from your diet eat a lot of red meat you get some creatine from it but it's one of the most researched well-proven supplements out there it's very cheap next to no side effects if any why not take creatine you're going to see benefits, it's easy to use, costs very little. So the parallels can be drawn with red light therapy. We know it works, we know it is available out there in terms of the sun, but if you want to dial in and tap into the benefits of 18 nanometers and shine it on that sore tooth or that wound or use it on your legs during a, I don't know, cycling workout, whatever. Maybe you're doing a multi-day swim event and you're going back to the hotel every evening and you can target your body to help recovery for the next day performance, all those sort of things. If you want to do that, then of course, red light therapy is, is well and truly going to help. And there are so many products out there that are also going to help. Even better, you can dial in the dose, you can dial in the protocol, you can dial in the wavelength. The sun, you can't go out there and say, hey, Mr. Sun, uh, don't need any of the 810 today, but give me heaps of 850. Or, you know what? I don't really want any blue because I'm trying to go to bed soon. And I really just want a little bit of red for, you know, the skin. But don't go, don't go overboard because I don't want it to penetrate too deep. And, you know, you can't do that with the sun. Whereas you look at something like the Royo Refine Red Light Therapy Panel range. 
you can go and you can customize everything. You can max out on the A10 and drop the red light right back. You can pulse the light. You can do all sorts. You look at the Biomax panels. You've got the blue light in there. If you're using it late at the nighttime, turn off the blue light. You can really target and tailor your approach with the red light therapy panel. But what is quite interesting here is you're also going to get a very good amount of natural red light therapy. Now, I suppose all light is natural when you think about it, but it's coming from a natural source, I guess. By simply going outside, lots of issues here. Do you want to go outside naked? Do you want to go outside and also be exposed to all the UV rays? I hope you can see where I'm coming from here. Some people are going to say, just use the sun. Yes, that is true. But what happens if you don't want those UV rays? What happens if you don't want the blue? What happens if you want a particular dose? What happens if you can't get outside? What you know where I'm going with this. Anyway, this was just the first experiment on this topic. If you would like me to do more, let me know in the comment section. Tell me what you'd like to see. Should I test the sun in different climates? Should I test the sun in different seasons? Should I test the sun in different parts of the day? You know, I've literally tested the hottest, brightest sun I can get at the moment here in New Zealand. We're in the middle of summer on a clear day at midday. So even though these numbers from the sun are quite good, maybe that's only available for me here in New Zealand for two weeks of the year for three hours each day. In which case, again, it goes back to, well, I'm going to go get a red light therapy panel for the other 350 days of the year. Maybe if you live in the equator, it's not a problem. But anyway, let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know your thoughts. Are you surprised from this? Because I know I was surprised. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here and I'll have to do a follow-up video. But when I do a follow-up video, I'll do some more experiments, some more testing, use some more panels, use some more devices. Well, let me know what you'd like to see and I'll do a really cool version. But for now, this is just thinking out loud, as you can tell. Looking forward to reading your comments on this one, okay? Uh, get down there, leave a comment. But also, while you're waiting for that video, be sure to subscribe. Check out this video. I've done some pretty cool experiments with light and penetration. I think you might find it quite interesting.